Hi everybody, it's Miss Mancini and I am back with another First Chapter Friday. Again, my name is Miss Mancini. Some people know me as Miss Nikki. I am a fifth grade ELA teacher at Bedminster Township School. So hello to all of my bulldogs out there. And I am also a board member for the New Jersey Literacy Association, who has been providing these awesome story time read alouds for you over the past couple of weeks. Today, I am going to be reading another story for middle grade students. This book is called The Inside Battle and it's by Melanie Sumro. If you're in sixth grade or up, I think you would love this book. I also think that some fifth grade students might enjoy it. So Inside Battle has to do with some of the things that result from a character's father going to Afghanistan and serving in the military. And he developed something that's known as post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. And it affects how anxious he is and how he reacts to certain situations. So that becomes a big part of what happens in the plot line. If that's something that you think would be interesting to read about, stick around and you might enjoy this book. I also thought I would show you the official book trailer for the Inside Battle. A book trailer is similar to the previews that you see at the movies. So let's take a look at that. I'm going to share my screen with you. And I think you would enjoy taking a look at this. So I'm gonna put this on and then we'll jump right into reading. Okay, so this book did come out in March, not too long ago, and it is published by Yellow Jacket, uh, an imprint of Little Bee Books. So I would like to thank them for giving me permission to read this to you today. I am going to be reading part of chapter one. I hope you enjoy it. The Inside Battle, chapter one. They say the apple does not fall far from the tree, so I guess that makes me an orange. I'm nothing like my dad. Rebel, Aunt Bertie says gently. I told you to get your father. She slides a pan back and forth on the cooktop as she fries bacon. It sizzles and pops, the smoky smell filling our kitchen. I drop my chocolate Pop-Tart onto my plate. Maybe if I loaded up on more protein, I'd get muscles like dad's. I flex my left arm and squeeze my scrawny bicep with my other hand. Aunt Bertie laughs when she sees what I'm doing. My arm drops to my side. One more time, I ask, pulling my robot, a rectangular shaped block backward until he touches the newspaper. You know how dad hates Quentin. Dad's a Marine, an actual American hero, and he got home from Afghanistan several months ago, or really the government sent him home. He likes things the way he likes them. One more, my aunt says, returning her focus to the browning bacon. I set the timer on my watch and release my robot. Quentin, who's a little wider than a Pop-Tart with quarter-sized wheels, rolls across our kitchen table. Come on, I say, as he passes the salt shaker. It doesn't look like he's going to stop, 
But then he makes an abrupt right angle turn, avoiding the jar of grape jelly. I smile. He's working. I check my watch and finish my milk. Come on, I say again, wiping the wet mustache from my upper lip with the back of my hand. The shovel attachment on Quen Ten drops with a whizzing sound and then scoops a small plastic disc from the table and flips it over. Yes! My robot slides the disc next to the target area, the tub of butter, to bring my starting score to 25 points. Aunt Bertie sets a plate of toast on the end of the table. Time's up, kid! Quentin glides in reverse and returns to home base, the newspaper. I stop the timer. If I'm going to get more points than a Jeep, I have to make sure I can finish at least eight missions in under two and a half minutes. Aunt Bertie hovers, drumming her glittery nails on the table. I thought you guys were BFFs. I don't even try to hide my eye roll. I turned 13 a few weeks ago, and now my aunt thinks she's cool when she uses teen speak on me. She puts her hands on her hips, covering BB-8 on the Star Wars scrubs I gave her last Christmas. She's trying to pretend she's angry, but then she smiles. Don't give me that look, young man. I know you know what BFF means. Right. I whisper so dad doesn't hear. Ajit and I are friends. She gives me a knowing nod. Your dad's taking you to school today. My shoulders tense. It'll be okay, she says, giving me a pat on the back. Now clean this up and go get him for me. I turn off Quentin and lower him into the plastic crate next to my foot. My hand sweeps across the table, corralling the remaining Lego pieces before I drop them next to my robot. Your dad needs to eat his breakfast before that job interview this morning. Aunt Bertie then lowers the pans into the sudsy sink water with a splash. I quickly scan the table, making sure everything's in place, and nestle the salt shaker against the, paper, the pepper before positioning them to the right of dad's plate. Who's he interviewing with this time? My dad has survived five deployments to Iraq and Afghanistan, but he hasn't been able to land a job now that he's home in Amarillo, Texas. Aunt Bertie sits in her chair across from me and bites into her crispy bacon. It's that mechanic position down at the stockyards. She swallows and lowers her voice. I think it'd be good for him might give him a healthier routine. Dad doesn't like to talk about it, but he has a lot of bad memories from being a Marine and they sneak up on him sometimes. He'll get it, I say, trying to sound confident. I don't like seeing Aunt Bertie so worried and lately she worries a lot about Dad. A weak smile crosses her face as she nods. Go on. You know how he gets when he hasn't had his breakfast. She laughs, but it comes out sounding sad. I stand and approach the wooden bench that sits beneath our coat pegs, trying my best to ignore the bug out bags dad makes us keep lined along the floor in case of an apocalypse or government attack. After placing my crate on the bench, I hurry down the long hallway my steps muffled by the thick carpet. Our house belonged to my grandparents before they died. First my grandma, followed by my grandpa a month later. Aunt Bertie says he died of a broken heart, and since she's a nurse, I believe her. The walls still hold the same pictures of my aunt and dad with them, getting older and taller as you move down the hallway. At the end, there's a picture of dad standing in front of a tank with his platoon. He looks like a hero from one of those war movies. It was taken when he was in Iraq the first time. I was about two then. I bite my lip and face the door to the basement, 
there's a keep out sign taped to it, but I knock anyway. No response. With my ear against the door, I try knocking again. Dad, still silence. The door always sticks. So with one hand on the knob and my shoulder against the door, I push it open with a pop and stumble forward a bit. There's a dim light coming from the basement, but the wood paneled wall blocks my view. Dad, nothing. My fingertips slip across the flats and grooves in the paneling as I carefully descend the steep carpeted steps. As soon as I reach the floor, I can see that his bed is made like he's ready for someone to inspect it. He's dressed, but sits with his back to me. A white glow beams from his computer, highlighting the yellow flag with the rattlesnake that hangs above his desk. I clear my throat, but he doesn't turn around. The picture of mom, the one where she's laughing at Cadillac Ranch, sits on the desk to his left. It was taken a few months before she died. To his right, I spot the handgun, the one that he keeps loaded. My chest tightens. I really wish he did not have that thing. He's typing vigorously and from the black sun and moon at the top of the screen, I can tell he's chatting with that militia group again, the flag bearers. My fingers curl against my legs as I look to the right, where dad has spent the last few months recreating a battle scene on top of grandma's old ping pong table with toy soldiers, plastic tanks, and sand. He's even used cotton to mimic the smoke coming from a conquered city. Don't touch it, dad barks, startling me. I didn't even realize that he had turned around. He's pretty stealth like that. The muscles in his arms and chest bulge beneath his cotton dress shirt. I raise my hands as if surrendering. I didn't, I didn't. From the light of the computer, I can see his clothes are pressed, but there's still a shadow of stubble across his cheeks. He rubs his eyes. They're red, which probably means he did not get any sleep again. Some nights, I can hear him pacing the house for hours. He sighs, his muscles relax. I'm sorry, bud, you startled me. Uh, breakfast is ready, I say, thumbing toward the stairs. Dad stares at me for a second, and suddenly it feels like I'm the one being inspected. His eyes linger on my planetarium t-shirt, before moving to my long, skinny legs and down to my running shoes that never run. I can tell he's disappointed as usual. Aunt Bertie made eggs, I say past the lump in my throat. I've got to finish this email. He spins around facing his computer. Immediately, his back stiffens. Dad curses and slams his fist against the desk, making the gun skitter across the surface. I jump as he starts pounding the keyboard again. Forget it, I'll just walk to school. I retreat up the stairs, taking them two at a time. As I return to the kitchen, Aunt Bertie glances past me. Where's your dad? I'm a little winded from the stairs, but manage a shrug. Busy? Her face twists as she snaps her fingers. No, sir, he's not doing this to me today. I can walk, I offer, begging her with my eyes. Please don't make me ask him again. And it works, kind of. She stomps past me, her crocs thudding along the hallway. Nathan, she calls to the basement. My fingers twist the bottom of my t-shirt. I hope dad doesn't think I sent her. Breakfast is ready. You've got that interview this morning, she says, and you need to take your son to school. Just give me a second, dad shouts. I cringe. We don't have a second, Aunt Bertie says. You know I'm helping with that root canal this morning and Rebel needs to get to school on time. 
I lift my backpack from the peg and sling the strap over my shoulder. Really, I can walk, I say, as she enters the kitchen. Carrying all of your robotic stuff, she shakes her head. I nod and my foot accidentally knocks into one of dad's bug out bags. He's assembled one for each of us, a black backpack filled with dehydrated food, dry matches, a hunting knife, and more stuff I don't know how to use. The bag tips away from my foot, but thankfully nothing falls out. Fine, I'm here, Dad says to Aunt Bertie as he brushes past me. I scramble to straighten the tipped backpack. He scowls. My hand comes off the bag. Didn't I tell you I'd be up? I nod. Yes, sir, even though he didn't. The legs of his chair scrape against the tile floor before he sits and snatches his fork, jabbing it toward his sister. You're worse than a drill sergeant. He stabs his scrambled eggs and stuff them, stuffs them inside his mouth. After a few chews, his shoulders soften. But you sure make a better breakfast, he says, savoring the bite in his mouth before he shovels in more eggs. Aunt Bertie zips toward her jacket, snatching it from the peg while I grab my spare parts crate off the bench. You never know when you might need something in the heat of competition. Then I get the crate with Quinn 10 and stack it on top. Out of nowhere, Aunt Bertie sneaks up on me and kisses my cheek. Hey, I protest, leaning away from her with my hands so full I can't wipe it off. Not while I'm defenseless, she grins. Good luck today, and don't forget your jacket, she says, pointing to my man versus robot hoodie hanging against the wall. I wrinkle my nose. I hate how she still treats me like a baby, like I don't know when to wear my jacket or when to brush. I wrung my tongue across my gritty teeth. Oops. He's not a baby, Dad mutters, his mouth half full of toast. You shouldn't treat him like one. Aunt Bertie presses her lips together like she's holding something in, probably her favorite curse word. I shrug. The man's got a point. She shakes her head. Rebel, you'll do great today, she says, and hurries toward the front door slamming it shut. Dad startles. His face tightens when he realizes I saw him jump. Suddenly, I wish Aunt Bertie was still here. And that's where we're going to stop for today, everybody. I hope that you have enjoyed listening to a little bit of The Inside Battle by Melanie Sumro. Uh, again, thanks to Yellow Jacket for giving us permission to read this today. If you want to find out more, be sure to check out this book from your local library or order it online. Again, have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you next Friday for another First Chapter Friday. Be safe, stay well. <laughs>